Hi, so I recently had the situation in Cubase where I had a large project with a large number of tracks and I wanted to trim the beginning of the project. Now, obviously I could do that the old fashioned way, select all the tracks, make a cut at the beginning and then move all the remaining tracks to the left. But I figured there must be a better way to do this. So I had a look at the range tool in Cubase. And I think that tool in Cubase and what you can do with it can be very useful for all of you. So let's go. So let's immediately dive into Cubase and have a look at the range selection tool. So this is my example Cubase project with a lot of tracks. Like I said, 74 in total. Now as for selection tools, by default, what is selected is the object selection tool on top here. And that means when we select anything, we basically select events. If you're in the project window, you can select multiple events and then you can perform certain functions on those multiple events. However, sometimes you want to do an action on just part of an event. And for that, you can use the range selection over here. And what you can do with that range selection tool is you can select part of an event, a range. This even goes over multiple events. You can also select a range over multiple tracks. If you want to select a range which aligns exactly with an event, you can also double click an event and then the range of that event is selected. You can move that selection with the cursor keys. So you can move it up or down over the tracks. You can move it right or left and it moves in the way you've set up your grid over here. So now it moves in larger steps. You can extend the range with your mouse button, make it larger, even extend the range going down or going up over multiple tracks. You can also extend that range by shift clicking. So if I shift click over here now, You can see that my range gets extended from my initial start of the range. You can also deselect a certain track from the range by control clicking. I'm now holding control click and you can see that the range now excludes the track that I clicked. Now there's also a range selection menu. Suppose for example that I have selected this range and my cursor position is over here, measure 57. There is edit, select, and there are some additional options here. For example, I want the left selection side of the range to go to the cursor. There you go, the left selection goes to the cursor. If I put the cursor over here, there's also the option to go to range select, right selection side to cursor. And as you can see, there are multiple ways to select the range. For example, from start to cursor, it selects everything from the start of the project until the cursor. Now there are also nudge options for the range. So suppose I select this range and over here I can enable the nudge toolbar. These buttons over here, you can see I can move the selection range left or right. I can extend the selection range at the beginning or I can extend or shorten the selection range at the end. And whenever you make a range selection, the info line shows where the start is of the range selection, where the range ends, how long it is, what the top track is of the range selection and what the bottom track is of the range selection. And before I now go on to what you can actually do with a selected range like this, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, give the video a like for the algorithm. And if you want to get notified when I release another video, you can push the bell icon. And if you want to support the channel even more, I have some affiliate links in the description to all the equipment that I'm using in the home studio over here. And if you click on any of those links and then buy anything at those stores, I get a small commission without any extra cost to you. Let's now go back to the range selection. When you have selected the range, like I just showed you, what can you do with it? Well, let's have a look. So let's, for example, select these guitar parts over here. I can now move this whole range on these tracks by just left clicking and dragging and dropping everything to the right and it gets removed from its original location and moved to where I want it. If I undo that, I can even move this to other tracks if I really wanted to. And I can also copy it by pushing Alt at the same time. And now you can see that the original stays there and there's a copy at the new location. And all of this you can also do with the object selection tool, of course, but then you would have to cut all tracks 
on both sides of the range and then move it. Whereas now Cubase does all the cutting for you. Now it's also possible to remove these range by just pushing the delete button on the keyboard, undo. And there's also a special remove, which in video editing it's called ripple edit. But over here it's in the special range menu and it's called cut time, which basically means that the whole range gets removed, but everything after it gets shifted to the left. Yeah, so the gap is basically closed by everything which is after the range that you removed. Now, since I did a cut, I can also paste it somewhere. For example, if I select a range over here and I select range paste time, it will be pasted at the location that I put the new range in. But I can also say edit range paste time at origin and then it pastes it at the original location. And it's really an insert because everything after it gets moved again. So let's undo and get back to the original situation here. It's also possible to insert silence. For example, if I wanted to put a silence in here, I could say edit range, insert silence. And you see that in my range, there is now nothing anymore. So it's silent and everything which was in the range gets moved to the right after the inserted silence. Undo. It's also possible to do a selection and cut the other way. For example, if I wanted to only keep this part of the range and remove everything else, I could do edit range crop. And you see that everything on those tracks gets removed except for the range that I selected. Undo. If you want to make some quick cuts, it's also possible you can select a range, edit range split. And you can see that where I had my selection range the events have now been split up. If you just wanted to have more events on these tracks, for example, undo. Now there's some other functionality in Cubase related to ranges, which allows you to put the locators at the range location. And for that, you can go to preferences, cycle follows range selection. And in that case, whenever you select a range, you can see that the locators on top are set to exactly your range. And the nice thing about this is that it allows you to easily copy everything in your project. For example, if I select this range from the start, you can go to edit range global copy. And if I now put my cursor somewhere and I push control V to paste, you can see that everything in my project, all tracks have been copied with that global copy and now pasted in a new location. And that includes things like the signature track, the tempo track and any automation which was on any of the audio tracks. Ctrl Z to undo. So I've now shown you how to make selections, then what you can do with those selections. But let's now dive into some practical use cases of all of this. Now the first practical use case is actually what got me started with the range selection tool again. Because if we look at this project, over here we can see that there are two reference tracks of this mix. And the reference tracks start exactly at measure three, but somehow the actual recorded tracks start one beat later, mostly. There's a bit of a lead in on the Hammond organ, but apart from that, everything starts one beat later. So I basically wanted to cut one beat from all tracks, except from the reference tracks, of course, because they are in their proper place. And then the grid, I need to set it to beats because I only want to remove one beat from the first measure. Left locator is already set to the proper location. Right locator, alt click. And then I need to go to the range selection tool and I can do select in loop. And as you can see over here, there's now a range selection over the entire length of the project for that one beat that I want to remove. But obviously I don't want to remove anything from the reference tracks. So I can control click on those. So they will not be removed. And what I can now do is edit range cut time and my whole selected range will be removed and everything after it will be moved to the left. And as you can see over here, now all the other tracks start at measure three as well, which is exactly what I wanted. Now for the second practical use, I can zoom out again to get the whole project in view. And imagine that I wanted to remove this whole middle section over here of the song. So I can basically do the same thing. I can make this selection over here in this case, I'm not using the locators, but I'm just going to use the multiple selection shift click on the last track that I want to select. And you see there's now also a whole selection range over the whole project. In this case, I also want to remove that middle section from any reference mixes that I have. Maybe not this one because this is a different reference track. And again, I can do the same trick, edit 
range, cut time, and that whole section is basically removed from our project. Now I know there's another way you can do this easily in Cubase and that's by using the arranger track. But if you're interested in that, then let me know and I will make a separate video on that as well. So let me undo this. And my third practical use case would be that if you're scoring a movie, so let's add a video track, put it on top. And let's imagine that you got some nice video footage from your movie director and that you've made like a whole arrangement for the whole movie. And let's imagine that he delivered another version of the movie or video clip with some extended footage in there in which he doesn't need any music. So somewhere in the video clip, there needs to be a break. Well, again, in that case, you can select the range where you want the additional silence inserted. You can select that whole range and you can insert silence, moving everything else to the right so that it's still in sync with the rest of the video clip or movie. Yeah, so these are some of the use cases that I could come up with for actually using this tooling. And like I said, the first one is actually the use case that led me to dive into the range selection tooling a little bit deeper. And I think it's quite worthwhile. So if you found some other ways to use the range selection tool and the editing possibilities, please let me know in the comments so that myself and other people that watch this video can also learn from that. Much appreciated. And also very much related to my last example on editing music for a movie or video footage. In that case, it's also very important that you can manipulate tempo in Cubase and I have a separate video about all the additional details that Cubase 12 provides for editing tempo in a project. So have a look at that, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.